What's going on guys? My name is Joey Franzo with Flex Training Systems and today we're going to be talking about uh, peaking, uh, what does it mean to peak and what is you know the taper and um, I see this a lot. Uh, you know guys will watch other guys in training leading into a competition. Some guys are strong you know 10 days, two weeks out, whatever and they wonder hey how come I'm not strong right now? So well, the main reason for that is um, everybody has a different level of recovery. Some people recover really fast. Some people take a long, long time to kind of get rid of their fatigue. Um, I'm going to give you two examples, kind of polar opposites. So you have the smaller, weaker lifter, female, let's say, uh, you know, around 500, 700 total, somewhere in there. And then you have, uh, you know, the big strong male lifter, let's say we're talking, uh, you know, 250 pounds plus, uh, pushing, you know, near 1700 to 2000 plus total. Um, those two lifters are going to have very different, for the, m like most of the time they're going to have very different uh, recovery needs. You know obviously like relative to human beings you know squatting six seven hundred pounds is going to cause more strain on the body and structures versus you know a smaller lifter squatting to three hundred pounds um, if you you know you're trying to peak on time you're trying to peak for the meat right you want to peak on the day of the meat not before not after for smaller lifters uh, it's really it's like a really tedious thing that uh, many coaches may not get right the first time and I don't blame them uh, it's it's something that if you haven't seen before if you haven't gone through um, you might get thrown off you cannot just give a small female lifter a week off or four days off even with no training as they're going to detrain pretty quickly they're going to lose that neurological efficiency uh, and you know you might be hitting five to ten kilos maybe even more less than you know their best training numbers typically these smaller lifters uh, whatever they hit in training is you know their best training numbers are usually what they're gonna put together on the platform uh, if you do their their taper right um, it, it's kind of a tricky thing because it goes against it, it literally goes against like principle um, at first when you look at it from afar but really you are you know the same the same principles of the taper which are you know you're gonna keep intensity and pull out volume you're still doing that with female lifters it's just female or weaker lifters it's just um, you're doing it closer to the competition and you may not need to taper them much if at all okay so now we have the opposite end we have the bigger stronger lifter um, they're going to need much more recovery and what you don't want is to find yourself at a situation, you know, uh, I don't know, 10 days out, nine days out, where they're like beat to shit. And no matter what you do in that time, you're not going to get them um, prepared and, you know, in time for the competition. Typically, when this happens, you know, the lifter might do okay. Uh, they might get rid of some, some fatigue and they might do okay on the platform and then you know, uh, two, three, four days later, five days later, they hit a PR um, after the meet. So that's definitely, that's not what you want. It's good information. It's good to know that you actually did make progress. The training was good. It just, um, you know, you didn't do it. You didn't, you didn't peak when you wanted to peak. Um, I would say that you know, and, and, and everybody needs to understand that every lifter is going to have different levels of recovery. It's usually uh, dependent on, you know, their training age, uh, what their training was like before the meet. Um, you can actually, you know, train yourself to deal with higher volumes, um, kind of like better than before. Uh, this is something that you can work on over time. And you can also lose that um, that ability. So I'll just use myself as an example. Many years ago, when 
the DUP, so the daily undulating periodization. I'm being facetious, but you know, basically it was when we had some data to show that it was beneficial to train multiple rep ranges during the week. Um, you know, throughout a training block rather than just focusing an entire block on, you know, one specific rep range. Um, I was training, I was squatting, benching, deadlifting three times a week, and it was hard at first, but I eventually got used to it. Uh, I did make a lot of progress, but ended up getting hurt. Um, so, I mean, you know, the progress was there. It's just, it just wasn't sustainable. Um, and now I'm... I'm training with lower volume than I ever have. Um, actually, my last training block was just f freaking like abysmal volume. I was only competition squatting once a week, deadlifting once a week. Um, still benching three times a week. Bench is pretty durable, but uh, you know. And then to go back to squatting two times a week, it was really hard for me. Um, it was it was just like I was feeling really really beat up, and I had to be very conservative. Uh, you know, that second day of the week on my squats. Um, so, you know, everybody's going to have different recovery levels. And just because you are able to recover from something now doesn't mean that down the road, especially as you get older, um, you know, you might need to tweak things. The next thing I want to talk about, uh, I touched on briefly earlier is you know this happens a lot with social media is we see um we see lifters strong leading into a competition and you might wonder uh you know why why are you not strong right now again that just has to do with the speed of your recovery let's say lifter a is strong 10 days out and lifter b is like a very lifter a is a is strong 10 days out and lifter a has uh, moderate recovery ability and then we have lifter B that's very very good recovery and they're strong 10 days out lifter B is probably going to peak a little bit before the meet he may still have a net profit on the platform but you know you never want to be in a situation where it's like a week or two out and you're saying man like what the heck happened uh, or, or, or like after the meet you're looking back two weeks and you're like man what happened i hit these prs like two weeks out why was i so weak today assuming you weren't doing a big weight cut or there weren't any crazy variables that are out of your control so you know it it kind of takes time it's something that you have to go through a few times before you can fully understand that you're not going to be strong all the time um and maybe mentally you're kind of worried that you're not as strong as you think you should be leading into a competition but you just have to trust your process trust the process trust the training trust your coach and uh you know use your prior competitions as information uh to help you dial in the next competition um the you know you it's this just go all, all goes with you know the whole don't compare yourself to others thing um it's kind of like a pet pet peeve of mine and i know it bothers other coaches when they see uh i know because they tell me about it they see like their lifters come to them and they say hey i saw so and so doing x should i be doing x like the coach is more than likely if he's competent aware of what you know what you're talking about and if they thought that it was beneficial for you, they may have put it in there. Or maybe maybe it's something that they want to experiment with, but they can't do it right now because we're trying something else. So, you know, I, it, you'll save yourself a lot of grief and, and unnecessary stress if you just understand that what you're doing right now is, you know, that's the plan for now. And you need to commit to that, uh, you know, execute on the platform, do the very best that you can, and then... If everything goes great, cool, maybe not tweak so much. And if there is a an issue, then at least you have that uh, information on hand and can make the change for next time. Alrighty guys, I hope you're able to take something away from this video. 
If you found it informative, please go ahead and drop a like. If you have any topics that you would like me to cover in regards to powerlifting or training in general, please go ahead and do that below. Or even nutrition. I know I've been getting some questions on nutrition things, uh, you know, to eat before and after training, stuff like that. So um, these will all come in due time. Thank you so much for listening, and I will talk to you in the next video.